Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're looking at AMD's Radeon Super Resolution technology, which is their implementation of driver based spatial upscaling for games. If you're familiar with Fidelity FX Super Resolution, you can think of RSR as a driver version of FSR that works across any game you like, with a few compromises to image quality compared to a native FSR implementation. RSR has just launched, it's in their latest Radeon driver, and we'll be diving into it today. In particular, what I want to do is compare RSR to NVIDIA's competing and almost identical technology called NVIDIA Image Scaling. We first looked at NIS towards the end of last year and thought it was a pretty effective upscaling solution for any game, though inferior in image quality to FSR and of course temporal solutions like DLSS. But how it competes with Radeon Super Resolution is another question entirely, as now both AMD and Nvidia have driver tools to help you spatially upscale games. Which GPU vendor does this better, and does it even matter? Well, we'll answer that today. Radeon Super Resolution is heavily based on FSR 1.0, in fact it's basically the same exact spatial upscaling algorithm available as a driver feature. The main difference between FSR and RSR is that FSR gets implemented into the game itself, meaning it is applied in the correct place in the game's pipeline. FSR upscales the pure game image before post-process effects like film grain are applied and before the HUD is rendered. So it's just the game being upscaled, while crucial UI elements are rendered natively and crisply. The downside here is obviously that a game developer has to go to the effort of integrating FSR into their game, you can't just add FSR yourself. RSR differs in that it requires no game developer integration at all, it's a simple driver feature you can enable for any game you like. But due to this, the upscaling process isn't applied in the optimal position. Instead of upscaling before effects and the HUD are rendered, RSR upscales the entire and final game image, including any UI elements. This has the potential to reduce image quality compared to a proper FSR implementation, however the benefit here is RSR works across thousands of games instead of just a handful. Enabling RSR in a given game is less straightforward than enabling FSR as it's a two-step process instead of a single click. First you need to enable RSR for the game you want in the AMD software settings menu, then in the game you need to reduce the resolution for the upscaling effect to kick in. If you just enable RSR in the driver and don't reduce the resolution, RSR won't work as intended and AMD's in-game overlay will tell you as much if you bring it up to check if RSR is enabled. AMD does a good job of guiding users through this process. If you head into the driver and enable RSR for the first time, it'll bring up a pop-up menu guiding you to instructions on how to use RSR and how you need to adjust the in-game resolution. This is much better than the clunky NVIDIA image scaling implementation, which is just included as a toggle that you have to figure out on your own, and is even included in both both the control panel and GeForce experience, which really needs to be consolidated. The RSR implementation feels like it was designed to be used, whereas NIS feels somewhat like an afterthought. RSR also has one major advantage over NIS in how it's implemented. You can easily enable RSR on a per game basis, whereas this is not as easy with NIS. If you want to use NIS on a per game basis, you have to enable it globally then specifically disable it on games you don't want to use the feature. This is pretty annoying as it makes the default experience to use NIS and it isn't immediately clear that this is how per game support works. Alternatively, you can enable globally with a sharpening setting of zero and then tweak sharpness on a per game basis, but again, Nvidia doesn't make it clear this is how per game use works and by default will grey out the feature if you do try and only enable it on a specific game. However, RSR is based basically the same as FSR, so you don't get adjustable sharpness strength, a core feature of NIS that you can adjust in-game. The amount of sharpening RSR applies is generally acceptable, but different games benefit from different sharpening strengths, so ideally AMD would expose a slider here as well. I'm also not a fan of AMD's restrictions on which GPUs support RSR. Nvidia opened up NIS for usage on essentially all of their GPUs, including popular products from the GeForce 10 series. Radeon Super Resolution is only available on RX 5000 series GPUs and newer, so RDNA and RDNA 2 families. Owners of older cards, which could benefit the most from RSR, are locked out. 
In particular, it's frustrating to see no support for Polaris GPUs like the RX 580, which to this day remain popular options for entry-level gaming. And to make matters worse, there is no clear technical limitation as to why RSR wouldn't be supported on these products, as FSR works flawlessly on older GPUs. Artificially limiting support is bad, and AMD should immediately fix this to enable support on all of their GPUs they support with their latest drivers. Let's take a look at image quality, and I'll start with Horizon Zero Dawn, which includes both FSR and DLSS natively, so we can make a good comparison between these modes and both RSR and NIS as well. Now, of course, in games that natively support FSR and or DLSS, there's no reason you would use RSR or NIS, but the reason we are testing these games today is specifically to compare them and their image quality. In this scene at 4K, there is essentially no difference between FSR and RSR. At best, there are slight differences in sharpness for some of the fine grass elements, and minor differences elsewhere, but when we zoom into any texture details, the FSR and RSR presentations look the same. Here we are viewing FSR ultra quality and RSR with an 80% resolution scale, as RSR allows for a slightly different set of scaling factors to FSR, even though the FSR image is using a native UI versus an upscaled UI for RSR, there is really no major difference here as RSR seems quite effective at upscaling these elements. When we look at NVIDIA's solution in NIS, there are some differences, though it mainly amounts to sharpening, which is user adjustable with NIS. At the default 50% sharpness setting, NIS is sharper but also more prone to sharpening artifacts and less detailed than FSR or RSR but we're talking about pretty small differences overall, not things that would majorly impact gameplay. None of these spatial solutions handle fine moving foliage well, so for the best image quality in Horizon, you should use either native rendering or DLSS. In particular, the DLSS image is softer, but much cleaner. At 1440p, again using ultra quality equivalent settings, there isn't much separating FSR and RSR. The main differences are in sharpness, it appears the game's built in setting for FSR is somewhat over sharpening the image, while RSR is softer. However, NIS is clearly inferior at 1440p in my opinion. It is a sharper image than RSR using 50% sharpening, but despite this is less detailed when looking at close up textures such as trees and rocks. NIS has a habit of thickening fine detail for lack of a better word. It's at 1440p where the differences between driver solutions and game built-in solutions become more apparent for UI upscaling. Specifically looking at the red health bar, there is a clear loss in detail when using RSR versus a native or FSR image. However, when comparing FSR with NIS, there's not much separating these technologies. I'd have to give it a slight edge to RSR for better handling of fine detail, but in both cases there's a large loss compared to native UI rendering. Another example we used previously was F1 2021, which has some excellent fine details and UI elements to explore. Here we're comparing 4K images using FSR ultra quality to RSR with an 80% resolution scale, and to be honest, it's hard to find any difference in the image quality for the car in the center of the screen. There are a few differences in the reflections, but overall, whether you go FSR or RSR, it makes little difference to the game rendering quality. As for the UI, there is a minor reduction in crispness when using RSR instead of FSR, but it's hard to spot without zooming on a native 4K panel. Now when throwing NIS at a 77% resolution scale into the mix, NIS offers 77%, RSR offers 80% as the scaling options, again there is very little difference when viewing this image at 4K. I'm using a 30% sharpness setting here as I think it's the closest match to the RSR slash FSR image, and it's hard to spot any differences. RSR is slightly more detailed, and NIS is perhaps a little sharper, but these are nitpicks and in practice you won't notice the difference. The major differences are in how RSR and NIS handle UI upscaling. Well, maybe I shouldn't call them major differences, as it's still relatively minor, but here I'm putting RSR versus NIS versus native side by side, and in my opinion the RSR image looks closer to native than NIS. When handling UI elements, NIS tends to enlarge fine detail and brighten some areas as part of the sharpening process, although it can be hard to spot these differences without zooming in. Here I'm switching both RSR and NIS over to using a 50% resolution scale, so this is upscaling 1080p to 4K. It's much clearer in these images that RSR has superior image quality with better reconstruction of fine details. NIS is kind of blurry and some areas have ugly aliased edges. 
RSR is also quite blurry, but notably around UI elements, the RSR image looks far closer to native in terms of quality. This also plays out when actually playing the game. In general, the NIS image had more pronounced sharpening artifacts when upscaling 1080p to 4K, and when reducing the sharpening to eliminate these issues, the image was then blurrier than RSR. Despite RSR not including a sharpening slider, I was quite pleased with the level of sharpness in the image and probably wouldn't have adjusted it if there was a slider. Deathloop is a great example of where NIS benefits from having a user-adjustable sharpening slider, while of course RSI does not include one. The default experience using ultra-quality equivalent scaling options at 4K is that the RSI image appears slightly over-sharpened when examining fine detail. There's a small amount of brightening and ringing around fine objects when using AMD solution, compared to NIS when I manually reduce the level of sharpening down to 10%. The NIS image ends up slightly softer, but free from artifacts, which is my preference. Other than this, the images are very close between the different techniques and not as good as the native or especially DLSS presentations. Once again, the main differences are visible in UI upscaling. When using a high resolution scale like 70 to 80%, there's not a lot splitting RSR and NIS, and both end up getting reasonably close to native in this area. At 1440p though, I feel that RSR is slightly closer to native in how it handles the fine lines of the UI elements, but honestly, I think you'll have a hard time noticing during gameplay aside from the general reduction in UI quality versus native 4K or using built-in scaling like FSR or DLSS. The final game I wanted to briefly touch on was Far Cry 6. Here, using the benchmark pass, I've put NIS and RSR side by side using a 77% and 80% resolution scale at 4K respectively. And honestly, once again, I think you'll find it very difficult to spot any differences between the footage. Yes, I could pause and zoom and nitpick a few things here or there, but both RSR and NIS are quite effective at this resolution without impacting UI quality. FSR looks very similar in its presentation to RSR, and while NIS does look slightly different, they are both ultimately achieving the same sort of goal. How does Radeon's super resolution perform? Well, let's take a look, beginning with Horizon Zero Dawn. In this title, using a Radeon RX 6800 XT, RSR actually performs a bit better than the native implementation of FSR. There is no performance hit when enabling RSR compared to running the game at the same resolution scale but without RSR enabled, whereas with FSR, there is a small hit to performance at the higher quality settings, and a larger hit using the lower quality modes. It appears in this instance that there is some difference to using FSR that wasn't always visible in the quality comparisons. It could be related to the LOD bias settings that FSR recommends, but I'm not 100% sure. But in either case, whether you go FSR or RSR, performance does improve versus native rendering. We actually see a bit of a different effect in F1 2021. In this title, noting that we can only compare RSR to FSR using the ultra quality equivalent settings, as FSR in this game only has one accessible mode, RSR performs most similarly to FSR, and while it is slightly faster, we're really talking about margin of error stuff. Meanwhile, running the game using basic resolution scaling was faster again, about 4% ahead in our benchmark pass, so how this game uses the GPU is different to Horizon Zero Dawn and may be more taxing on the same areas that RSR requires to operate. In Deathloop, RSR performance sat between basic resolution scaling and FSR in terms of performance, although when using the performance equivalent settings, it was much closer to basic scaling than FSR. However, given FSR's superior UI rendering quality, especially at lower quality settings and resolutions, I definitely recommend using FSR over RSR, even with the 13% performance difference seen here. And then with Far Cry 6, there really isn't a significant difference between using FSR, RSR, and basic resolution scaling, with all providing a similar performance uplift over native rendering, even using lower base resolutions. Again, I'd still recommend that you use FSR over RSR in any game that integrates FSR, but it just gives you an idea that using RSR in games that don't support any other upscaling technologies is effective at increasing frame rates with relatively low overhead. In terms of how this stacks up compared to NVIDIA's solution, NIS, we can't do a direct comparison to RSR on the same GPU because, well, these are driver features that are exclusive to NVIDIA and AMD respectively. But the margins seen in our testing today are very similar to the results we saw when testing NIS last year on an RTX 3080, comparing NIS to native rendering and FSR performance. 
both techniques are able to improve performance over native rendering and have a minimal performance overhead. Overall, there haven't been too many surprises with how Radeon Super Resolution looks and performs. This is very much a driver implementation of FidelityFX Super Resolution, and in most instances, it looks similar to FSR in how it upscales games. The key difference here being that RSR is applied after rendering the entire frame, whereas FSR is applied in the middle of the pipeline. FSR can therefore be used in conjunction with native UI rendering, whereas RSR is forced to upscale the UI and other effects, causing a noticeable loss to visual quality, especially at lower render or target resolutions. This means that whenever you have the option, using built-in features like FSR is the way to go, but RSR can be an effective solution when games don't support any upscaling features. It was also good to verify that RSR has a minimal performance overhead, at least on AMD's current generation hardware, which allows RSR to significantly boost performance compared to native rendering. However, I'm still very annoyed by AMD's decision to lock out older hardware like the RX 580 from accessing RSR. Even if the performance overhead is larger on older Polaris GPUs, they stand to benefit the most from upscaling techniques as they may not be powerful enough to natively render modern games. AMD should unlock the feature to all Radeon GPU owners as soon as possible. The big question is whether Radeon Super Resolution or NVIDIA Image Scaling is the more effective driver-based upscaling technology. To be honest, I don't think it matters too much as in most instances there was only a small difference in visual quality between each implementation. When actually playing games, knowing that you're getting a worse than native presentation, either option is effective. If I had to nitpick between the two, based on what I've seen, I think that RSR is generally able to deliver slightly better image quality, particularly for UI upscaling and upscaling from lower render resolutions. 1080p to 4K upscaling was favorable to RSR, but there was virtually no difference when using, say, 80% render scales on either RSR or NIS. I certainly don't think this feature is a reason to buy an AMD GPU over an NVIDIA GPU. Owners of NVIDIA cards should still be satisfied with NIS. Outside of image quality and performance, there are some differences in ease of use. RSR is easier to enable, AMD provides good instructions for how to use it, and is far simpler to use on a per game basis than NIS. However, NIS has some strengths of its own, like adjustable sharpness, which does come in handy for some titles, and no restrictions on which NVIDIA GPUs are supported. I think both AMD and NVIDIA could easily achieve feature parity here, NVIDIA just needs to clean up their ease of use, and AMD needs to enable adjustable sharpness and broaden GPU compatibility. But at the end of the day, I think these two features are very similar. And I think that both AMD and NVIDIA GPU owners will be benefiting from having access to features like Radeon Super Resolution and NVIDIA Image Scaling. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you're interested in supporting the channel and the independent testing that we do, we have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, and all sorts of good stuff. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel because we will have more image quality analysis videos coming up I guess relatively soon we are expecting new features like Intel XESS and AMD FSR 2.0 in the coming months, so you'll want to subscribe so you don't miss those. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.